we do not take action now, 30 years from now, over 10 million people per year will die due to antibiotic-resistant infections. 10 million. That's 15 times the population of Detroit. Due to the overuse and misuse of antibiotics, bacteria have learned how to adapt and change so that they are no longer susceptible to antibiotics. Every time an antibiotic is exposed to the environment, such as through our food supply or through the medicine we use, the susceptible bacteria die, but the resistant bacteria are left to thrive and multiply. And this is how antibiotic resistance spreads. Bacterial evolution is outpacing the human invention of antibiotics. Strep throat could become a mass killer. Routine surgeries could pose a great risk, or transplants could no longer be possible. The good news is that if we all make some simple changes, we can slow the spread of antibiotic resistance. Just a few months ago, I was standing on the TEDx Ben stage sharing my story of Jonathan, a patient of mine that fell victim to this very crisis. The experience of losing a young and otherwise healthy man to a post-operative infection that should have been treatable changed my life and led me into specializing in infectious disease research. The feeling of helplessness, sadness, and anger at watching him die fueled me into taking action. Since then, I have published over 30 research papers and been invited to speak around the globe as an infectious disease expert. After that talk, I became acutely aware of our commonality in this struggle of antibiotic resistance. I received countless emails from people sharing their stories of how they have been impacted by this very crisis. One email I received stated, your talk hit home for me. My husband just died of an infection that was untreatable. Antibiotic resistance affects us all. Currently, at least 700,000 people per year die due to antibiotic-resistant infections. But we can all choose to make decisions to change our behaviors and to also tell everyone around us to do the same. In my TEDx Ben talk, I shared three action items that everyone can do Fight against antibiotic resistance. Do not buy meat raised with antibiotics. Use antibiotics sparingly. And lastly, educate yourselves. Today, I want to continue from where I left off and provide you with two more action items that you can start implementing right now. First, do not use antibiotics for longer than necessary. For most infections treated in your doctor's office instead of the hospital, if you are feeling better, you may be able to stop your antibiotics. The longer we are exposed to an antibiotic, the greater the chance that antibiotic-resistant bacteria will develop in your body and in the rest of the environment. So, if you're prescribed an antibiotic for an acute bacterial infection, once your symptoms resolve, give your doctor a call and ask if you can safely stop treatment. Second, only use hand sanitizers when hand washing is unavailable. And be sure to read the label. Not all hand sanitizers are the same. When we use hand sanitizers, we are attempting to kill off almost every single microbe that lives in our hands. 
the good and the bad. The more we expose bacteria to the same element, the quicker they will learn how to develop resistance. Furthermore, most hand sanitizers contain the ingredient triclosan, which is an antibacterial linked to antibiotic resistance. The best option is to use soap and warm water when possible and to lather that soap for at least 20 seconds. When soap and water are not available, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% ethyl alcohol and that is triclosan free. Having the opportunity to speak here in this city is a culmination of a journey for me. Sometimes life brings you full circle to a place that you have been before just to show you how much you have grown. This place for me is Detroit. See, I met Jonathan in 2007, less than two miles from this stage at Detroit Receiving Hospital. This city is the opening scene of my story as an infectious disease researcher. But this time, through the story shared with me, I stand here more aware of how connected each one of us is in this crisis of antibiotic resistance. I also stand here without that feeling of helplessness I felt 10 years ago because I chose to make the decision to fight against this crisis. Each one of you can also make the decision to change your behaviors and to tell everyone you know to do the same. We can write a new ending to this story, but the clock is ticking for all of us. Please join me in serving as an ambassador in this fight so that antibiotics can still save lives. Thank you.